Well, hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, this is Mark from Blue Poodle Studio, and uh, today we're here to talk about the film Pinocchio. Now, when I say the film Pinocchio, that can mean a lot of different things, and of course, a lot of attention is being given right now. We're a little bit to celebrate the new live-action version starring Tom Hanks, which is now appearing on Disney+. Plus. But instead, we're going to go back in, in time and focus on the original uh, 1940 uh, feature animation film from Walt Disney Studios. So I've got a variety of artwork and uh, books to show you, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the marketing of the film, but also then how the art styles have evolved over time for the property, because it's quite fascinating. So uh, first of all, I want to show up on my wall, I have a, a big display of some po Pinocchio uh, artwork, and I'll tell you a little bit about each of these. I've got a uh, LP album from uh, Disneyland Records from the early 60s. I've got a 45 LP storybook uh, that my sister-in-law gave me of Pinocchio, and I think that was from the 70s. The large painting is actually a reprint. Uh, there was a series of uh, uh, fine art uh, posters or prints that was done by the Disney Store early 2000s, and I found that on a clearance rack. Uh, and then uh, behind that is a the framed print of Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket is from the VHS marketing campaign. Uh, and then prior to that is a 1961 uh, print from uh, Disney Studios of the publicity photo. And then finally, uh, a vintage photo of Walt uh, with a mechanical puppet, a puppet puppeteer of, uh, of the Pinocchio character. Uh, so in the history of the film uh, marketing, uh, Disney had a, was an early innovator in doing a lot of um, very clever marketing ploys or marketing schedules. And in particular, uh, prior to the days of streaming or even uh, VHS tapes, uh, once a film went out of the theaters, you didn't have a way of seeing it anymore. Sometimes it'd be shown on television. Uh, but Disney had a strategy of re-releasing their classic films on roughly uh, somewhere between a seven to ten year cycle uh, back into theaters. And of course that's because uh, children are born and grow up and lo and behold there's a whole new audience uh, for these films uh, in the past. Now uh, when I was at Mead uh, we received a lot of uh, marketing materials from film studios and this print, and I have a letter uh, dated August 16th, 1961, uh, from Walt Disney Productions, and it talks about the re-release of the Pinocchio film in theaters, and it starts at the headline, 32 million kids are waiting. It has been eight years since Walt Disney's Pinocchio was released. That means there's another 32 million children between the, between the ages of one and eight who have heard about Pinocchio, read about it, but never seen it. They are our prime market. And the film goes on to talk about various marketing activities. Of course, they're pitching. Uh, they were wanting uh, Mead to do school supplies. And uh, it just talks a whole lot about toys and other products. They talk about the upcoming toy fair in New York at that time. Uh, so anyway, uh, that was uh, part of the marketing campaign for that film, uh, re-release of that film. Then, uh, with the advent of VHS tapes, uh, when I worked at the Disney Store, we would have big uh, anniversary releases of the films, and in a clever ploy or clever uh, gift with purchase, if you will, uh, we would always do some kind of a fine arts print. So the this print with the red uh, cut mat around it uh, shows uh, that was a gift with purchase. If you or pre-ordered uh, the VHS uh, anniversary uh, video of Pinocchio, you would also receive this uh, frameable print. So all right, some fun stuff there. But let's pivot now, and I want to go back and look at some books. And so uh, often, of course, any character, you know, they have standards of how the character is drawn or illustrated, but there are sometimes creative liberties taken with properties over time, kind of reinterpreting it, if you will. And I don't actually have a lot of Pinocchio toys. I did get this one uh, fun uh, Funko, oops, excuse me, uh, pop figure uh, from my daughter as a Christmas gift. This is Geppetto and done uh, in this sort of anime style of the sort of exaggerated head with a smaller body. And this just is indicative of how, again, uh, in a more contemporary fashion, uh, the characters can be portrayed. But let's go back and take a look at uh, some of the earlier books I've got and see a little bit of a history of some of the ways that um, uh, Pinocchio has been portrayed. Now, I do want to say that um, you know, Pinocchio and the story itself 
is uh, a little bit of a dark story. There are, it's kind of a morality tale, and um, and over time, uh, or in the story, of course, uh, Pinocchio makes some bad choices, and a lot of things uh, befall him, some negative experiences. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, but it's something that's kind of touchy. Now, the film is a beautiful, considered a true masterpiece of animation. Uh, it was very expensive to produce at the time, uh, because of all the special effects added in, but it's subsequently been reinterpreted in many different ways, and particularly through uh, book publishing. So uh, a couple, you know, we're gonna take a look at a couple. Here's a pop-up adventures. This is a book from uh, early 2000, and uh, in a fun kind of paper engineering way. Uh, this is not really all about Pinocchio, but you can kind of see uh, in this uh, particular page they show uh, Pinocchio and Geppetto are in danger. Uh, I do think the whale is a very fun character, and of course in the phase that Pinocchio has his donkey ears, kind of a weird uh, conversion of the character. But anyway, so uh, that was from uh, early 2000s. Now, um, for for many, many years, Golden Books was the primary publisher of Disney, uh, Disney storybooks, but then Disney kind of got back into business themselves. This is a book from 2001, published in 2001, and uh, it's a little more classic and uh, yet contemporary at the same time. You can kind of get a sense of, I think it's a very beautiful kind of watercolor illustration style, a little looser in the way it's treated, uh, and um, just some fun, really fun illustrations in here of his uh, adventures and misadventures, if you will. Uh, you know, the part where he goes to the uh, Pleasure Island and is uh, drawn by temptation. Now, uh, if you've seen, the, of course, the original film, you know that they're drinking and actually smoking cigars. The smoking part is downplayed a lot of these books. Of course, now it's considered slightly inappropriate, even though, again, in its day, it was a very strong morality tale, if you will. Uh, and then, of course, it's incredibly sad when uh, Pinocchio turns along with the other uh, Lost Boys turns into a donkey and is sent away to basically uh, kind of like a prison camp. Um, at any rate, so, and then there's finally the redemption at the end after they are swallowed by the whale and come back. So, anyway, so I like this style and I think there's some very uh, beautiful and striking uh, illustrations in this particular book. Uh, here is another book. Uh, this came from, um, let's see, this was 1992 and uh, <laughs> this was from Disney Press. So uh, Disney started doing uh, sort of their own interpretations of the books and a more uh, premium quality. Uh, not that the Golden Books had anything wrong with them, but they uh, they went back and did all new illustrations and reinterpretation of the story. And so, uh, again, they follow the same plot line. You do see a brief acknowledgement of uh, Pinocchio smoking a cigar and uh, having a beer at, an, at the uh, Pleasure Island nightclub. Um, again, kind of bizarre, but uh, they try to kind of, I think, skim past a little, <laughs> a little bit of that. And then finally, uh, in the end, of course, Pinocchio is transformed into a real boy. And I do want to say, interestingly, uh, when I was working at the Disney store, we, we basically concluded that no one really wanted any products based on the boy human version of Pinocchio, everybody preferred him in his uh, puppet state, if you will, when you see him as a wooden boy with the joints on his legs and his little wooden nose that pops out when he tells a lie. So, uh, anyway, right, it's kind of interesting uh, fun fact there, but uh, uh, anyway, fun stuff there. All right, now we're gonna go a little bit farther back in time. Uh, I really like this, um, <laughs> cover illustration. This is a golden, uh, vintage golden book from the, uh, night, uh, printed in the 1960s. There's even an inscription. I found this at a, a flea market, uh, used to belong to a woman, young girl named Mary Jane. And you can see some small child may have scribbled inside this at various points. Uh, the golden book style of anime of drawings were a little more simple, uh, and at times, uh, almost had kind of a woodcut feel about them. Um, but they're very classic illustrations, and I think they're very fun. Again, I, I'm always so fascinated by the Pleasure Island, kind of almost has a Tim Burton sort of creepy quality about it with the oversized uh, figures and balloons and such. So, uh, and I do think the cover illustration is very striking on that one. Uh, here is a slightly, again, another version. This is from 1973. Uh, the Golden Spine was one style of the Golden Books, and then this was another 
uh, iteration. Well, actually, this is Random House. I forgot about that. And uh, this is, again, their own illustrations. And uh, again, more uh, simple line drawings with some color in, coloration in. I don't think this is quite as attractive, but uh, again, it helps propel the story. And uh, it's a little more straightforward approach to that. Here's another uh, Golden Books version. Um, uh, this one with uh, the Blue Fairy on the cover, and again, the gold foil spine, and uh, sometimes a, uh, they do repurpose interior illustrations, so this may be a mixture of some of the older illustration work brought back uh, and republished again in this particular book. So uh, that one's kind of fun. Now this one I think is, uh, I thought this is one of my personal favorites. This is from, this is a 1971 and they did a lot of these kind of, they had individual books about the properties, but then they also did these combined books. And I particularly like this interior spread illustration because uh, when I worked at the Disney store and I also dealt with the Disney Consumer Products Division, we were always told that the storylines and the lives of the characters don't uh, cross different stories, never really interact. And that is uh, that was a guide for many, many years. Only in the recently has it been sort of you know the princesses meet each other and they kind of cross over lands. But I thought this particular illustration that includes so many different – you go all the way back to the Witch from Snow White to the Br'er Rabbit uh, stories, which is now no longer available. And then you can see little bits of, again, Snow White, Peter Pan, Lion and the Lamb, more Peter Pan here, uh, Dumbo. Um, and then tucked over here is Pinocchio uh, flying on the uh, – a dove back from the sea where he was stranded with the whale, uh, Cinderella with her coach, uh, again, more Lost Boys and uh, Peter Pan characters over here. So it's a fun illustration, a little bit bizarre the way they're all kind of put together here, but it's interesting. And then you see a little bit more of that inside in these uh, roundabout uh, kind of illustrations that use to frame the copyright notices and such. And again, they're using this sort of uh, grape vines and trees to blend a lot of the characters together. Here we're seeing 101 Dalmatians with the Pinocchio characters. Uh, we see some of the uh, Sophisticats, uh, other characters here. So it's a, it's a fun mashup, just again, a little bit unusual that you don't always see. But I wanted to go back, and so it is a mixture of different stories. It includes Bambi, Snow White, uh, Lady and the Tramp, Peter Pan. But let's go back, of course, and take a look at the classic Pinocchio. And um, these are uh, very, I think, the particular illustrations in this book are pretty evocative. They're not really seen a lot of other places. Um, it can be kind of dark, but of course we have him meeting the Blue Fairy and Pinocchio comes to life and we he meets his conscious Jiminy Cricket uh, and uh, celebrates a little bit with Geppetto before he strikes off to school. And then, of course, on the way to school, things go horribly wrong as he meets uh, some of the characters who then draw him into uh, this very dark adventure where he is kidnapped and shipped off to Pleasure Island. A very fun and bizarre kind of illustration here, uh, again, with the uh, has that sort of wacky kind of Tim Burton, Pee Wee Herman sort of quality about it that I think is fun and yet sort of frightening for children. Now, this is one of the more provocative where we see Pinocchio on what's called Tobacco Lane, and he is really stoking up heavy on the cigars, and we see cigarettes. And of course, this kind of stuff would never be published again today. And then this other illustration is also equally bizarre, where now all the lost children have been fully converted into the donkeys. You can still see some of their costumes, but they are now being herded by these very ominous looking, frightening men in the black hoods with the uh, cat and nine tails whips and they're all being loaded into crates. So this is the kind of stuff that give children nightmares. But of course, again, it was intended as a morality tale in its day. And so we struggle with it now. And I, again, I, I admire the bizarreness of it. And yet uh, this kind of stuff doesn't get published anymore, I'm here to tell you. So anyway, so then it follows uh, a very touching and beautiful illustration here of Pinocchio in the snow with Jiminy Cricket, feeling very lost. Here he's been, uh, you know, thrown into the sea and eventually is uh, uh, finds his way inside the whale where he and Geppetto uh, live for a little while before they escape. And again, some very beautiful kind of watercolor illustrations uh, until then, in the end, they are they get the whale to sneeze, and they're out, and he gets his conscious and says, hey, I'm going to be a good boy from now on, 
and uh, he's turned back into a boy. So, at any rate, a little bit of the history of Pinocchio. Uh, of course, I haven't had a chance to watch the new film yet, but I will, and we'll try and do a review on an upcoming video. But uh, I guess it just goes to show how uh, it's good to continue to reinvent and evolve, and uh, it's fun to rely on the legacy, and yet at the same time, blending things with newer styles and newer interpretations. So, at any rate, thanks again for joining today. Uh, please don't forget to uh, follow us on our uh, YouTube channel, and then uh, don't forget to check us out on both Facebook and Instagram, where you'll see uh, regular photos of all the great uh, product offerings in our collection. And uh, so, for Blue Poodle Studio, thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you again soon.